Hi everybody, it's Phil from One Wall Studio, and today I'm going to be showing off an Analog Obsession plugin for the first time on this channel. This is the Analog Obsession Patreon. Definitely consider doing a join because they give away their plugins for free to literally everybody. Now, if you notice the title of the video, today we're going to be talking about a plugin that came out sometime last year called Chan Nev. Now, some of you might be wondering what Chan Nev means. And I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of uh, copyright law or anything, but let's just say it is a channel that's inspired by Rupert Neve Designs. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at a real session using the real plugin and let's go through it piece by piece. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solo my drums here real quick. I'm going to look up good old fashioned Chan Nev. And you can see it right here. Nice and pretty. Let's get a nice little zoom in here. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that there are a lot of options here. For one thing, this channel strip has a preamp, a deesser, an equalizer, a compressor, and a limiter. And on top of that, the output channel actually has a drive knob emulating a tape distortion and an output gain. You'll notice in the bottom right corner, it shows that it has a routing diagram. So if you can't read that yourself, it shows you the serial chain that this channel strip plugin emulates. Now, this is unchangeable as far as I know, and it'll only let you go in one direction. So the very first part of the chain is the preamp. From there, it goes directly into the deesser. The deesser goes directly into the equalizer. The equalizer goes directly into the compressor. And then the compressor goes straight into the limiter. Now, what makes this so interesting is the limiter then goes into the tape knob. So if you wanted to limit and then distort, that's kind of your only option as far as tape goes. And that's fine. I tend to prefer having tape before a limiter, but you know, this is still a good channel for what it's worth and it's free. So for the price, I don't think you can get many plugins better than this one. Now, on that note, I'm going to show you what each individual section does and sounds like as we go in. You'll notice that I'm able to turn off every single section. With the exception of the tape section with an input button that glows when you've pressed it in just like it would on a real console. So let's get into the music. First, the mic pre. You'll notice that the mic pre actually has shelves as well as an input gain at mic level, quote unquote. It has 60 decibels of virtual gain, which does truly act as distortion. You can also pad in order to reduce the amount of input gain. I don't hear the pad button making any difference at zero though, so I wonder why that might be. Another simple input knob here is the trim, which actually acts as an input gain section. So if you adjust the trim down, the volume increases. So this is an input volume knob, which again allows you to adjust the input volume in accordance with this input gain as opposed to actual volume. No volume difference at all when you turn on the pad and turn the trim all the way down. Some of the other options include a high pass shelf that goes from 27 hertz all the way up to 270. A low pass shelf that goes from 19 kilohertz down to 3.9 kilohertz.
when they're both fully active, you can create some amazing lo-fi sounds. It almost feels like it automatically gain corrects for you. Without the filters, you can activate a killer high shelf at 10 kilohertz, which really brightens things up. In fact, let's take a look at what this is doing, shall we? It looks like the curve starts much lower than 10 kilohertz. If anything, it might start around 6 to 8 kilohertz, which could be fine. It's still pretty smooth as far as things go and adds a decent shine. With the 100 kilohertz, it looks like it starts grabbing somewhere around 300 hertz or 400. I would actually say probably closer to 300 hertz. This allows for some excellent bass boosted mixes. Anyhow, enough of that. Let's move on from the mic pre into the de section. You'll notice here that on this de you have options you have a release time. Starting at 50 milliseconds for the slowest possible release and going down to one millisecond for the fastest possible release. You can also soften it. which seems to have a much less aggressive attack. And you can create a bell as opposed to, presumably, a shelf. Although the width of that bell might be mighty high because it seems to turn off the entire signal if you go deep enough. compared to the shelf option. Still might be nice for softening some harsh upper mids with a little bit of a softness. Overall, I'd say that it's probably decent on that source. There's nice options, but I just wish I knew more of what they did without having to open up a spectral analyzer to understand. All right, so on to the next one. The EQ81 equalizer. Now this one has a four band variable frequency EQ style. There's another high pass and another low pass filter on either side that also still go from 27 Hertz to 270 Hertz and 19 kilohertz to 3.9 kilohertz. So you could do that either on the preamp or the equalizer. But what's really interesting is you've got more options here when it comes to the bands themselves. Now these aren't stepped like you would expect from a normal emulation, but they are variable frequency. So you can go a full range of motion and you can switch between high Q and lower Q, but you cannot manually adjust the Q. You also have the option to turn the low shelf into a low bell. That sounds to be relatively wide. From 33 hertz to 330 hertz. 
and instead of being from 330 hertz down, it feels like it grabs from a little bit higher. If you pull it all the way down, then it seems to start pulling as high up as about 1 kilohertz. Likewise, the high band, if you set it all the way down to 3.3 kilohertz, appears to actually start pulling as low as, again, maybe 1 kilohertz, maybe 600 hertz. Now one thing that's notable is that the mid-band EQs, one of them is set to 220 hertz up to 1200 hertz, and one of them is set to 1.5 kilohertz to 9.2 kilohertz. So you've got some range here, but you are limited in choice, and that's fine. If you were to boost one kilohertz, and then set it to a high Q band, you'd notice that it's very wide. You're definitely boosting from at least 300 hertz up to maybe three kilohertz with the high Q. And without the high Q, you might be going as low as 500 or 600 hertz up to maybe 1.6 or 2 kilohertz. So these are relatively wide bands as far as bell curves go. Likewise, the high Q makes it a lot wider. And you can really see the hole it leaves even without a high Q on. So you can get some massive holes with these boys. They are very musical, very wide. You're definitely not getting surgical here. At 40 dB of gain on the line equalizer, it's got a very crushed and flattened response from about 50 hertz up to probably 3 kilohertz, and then allows for a little bit more in the upper regions to get through, whereas 40 decibels of gain on the mic pre does a lot less damage. And if you crush it with 60 dB of gain, it's a lot less bright and it lets a lot more low end through, creating a much more smiley face curve. Crushing everything, but in a different way. So again, the difference between 40 dB of gain on the mic pre versus the EQ is very apparent. All right, now let's keep going from there. Up next you have a beautiful compressor, emulating the 2264 compressor, but each one is given its own external sidechain. This compressor has ratios from 1.5 to 1, all the way up to 6 to 1. Release times from 100 milliseconds, all the way up to 1 second, or 1000 milliseconds. Gain from 0 to 20 dB but it still feels like it adjusts for the gain. Somehow, because if you crank this all the way up, it'll get smashed. So it's doing some kind of distortion without actually raising the levels. Let's hear how this sounds at a decent ratio of maybe four to one with release times of 100 milliseconds. Ah, yeah, that sounds nice. That's very punchy. Very grabby compressor. In terms of bus control, I definitely leave it at maybe no more than one dB of gain reduction. one to two, and a little bit of gain to make up for it. it. Does feel like it's being externally limited.
even a little bit of gain really pushes that compressor. And doesn't affect the actual compression ratio or how much is being gain reduced. So this is clearly post gain. I'll analyze that more on a single snare channel later. This is also one of the few pieces that has an external sidechain option. So if you look at the routing here, you can see that there are a three and a four input option, which can be used for the external sidechain, which will then drive the compressor like you would normally. So if you wanted to throw this on your guitars and have the snares or vocal punch it down, you could use this compressor as a sidechain. Let's look at the limiter. This is the second to last stage before the plugin's output stage, so let's hear how it sounds, shall we? Wow, that is grabby. That's wild. So it really crushes the signal. And what's more so, that release time is 50 milliseconds to 500 milliseconds. That's really strange. Wow. I definitely wouldn't recommend using more than maybe one dB, one to two dB of gain reduction on this boy because it can go overkill very fast. Now, almost all of these have a mix knob for wet and dry, although on Reaper, most people can just use the knob in the top right corner to do a blend. So if you wanted to blend the whole channel strip, then use the Reaper wet knob. But if you just want to blend one or two of these, you can just as easily do that for a parallel compressor or a parallel limiter. and it affects the gain choice too. So if you really wanted to smash things, you can really give it a go. Let's listen to just the tape saturation now and see how that fares. Wow. It really seems to scoop the mids first, keeping the low end and the high end pretty focused. And it also adjusts for gain so if you smash it, the volume does go down. For example, I'm smashing this by 24 dB. And it actually reduces the signal volume on the output by 24 decibels. So that's interesting. So if you want to smash this by 24 dB, you then have to compensate on the output gain by 24 dB. But yeah, that's also something you can go absolutely nuclear on. So that's pretty cool. So if you want a little bit, you can do so. Just get it real gritty. All right. So now that we've seen the functions of everything, let's explore a little bit of what's under the hood, shall we? So first off, there's no getting around it. There is a two times oversampling going on on this plugin at all times. And you can see on the performance meter that ultimately 
that does have an impact, although how much is dependent on how many modules you have active. Obviously, without the channel strip activated, you get no CPU usage. With it activated, it goes up to, on my old Ryzen 2700X system, half a percentage of CPU usage. And as these modules are introduced, it goes up piece by piece, not terribly much, but goes up a tiny bit for each module. So turning them all off really wouldn't do much in the grand scheme of things because it's fairly consistent in its CPU usage once it's on. However, if you wanted to use a little bit of everything, turning up all of the parameters to some degree and adjusting the drive. In real life application, it is extremely consistent. So it's far less egregious than some other analog emulated channel strips out there. And it will not break your CPU, thankfully. So if you're really interested in getting a good channel strip that has its own unique sound, right off the bat, I can tell you that this absolutely does. Now, what I'm going to do just for funsies is I'm going to throw this on pretty much every channel and see what I like, see what I don't like and see where it fits best. So keep in mind, this is going to be a scratch track, but by the end of it, I'm going to have everything using just this channel strip. All right, everybody, I'll see you when it's over. And there's probably going to be some outtakes or something. On room tracks, now that's where it could definitely shine. Nice rooms. Oh, that's such a nice smack. Please forgive the scratch vocals if you don't mind. Guitar time. One thing I really like about this so far is the post and the pre EQ because of the mic pre and the equalizer. Oh, that's gnarly. Aside from some gating stuff. And then let's hear how it sounds on some vocals. This is a very warm boy. Yeah, smash it. Now let's see how it does with uh, being in the mastering chain. All right, this is going to be fun, boys. Let's let's hit it. I went true vault mode. True vault. All right, but enough of that childish nonsense. Ooh. Ooh. 
Oh, that's nice. Entitlement blades are the concourse of dreams. I drag myself out of the wreckage. Wow. I cannot surrender. Get rid of this beast. I cannot remember what's being to me. I call it his favorite. I call it his ease. I am freaking this is very my trace. All right, so this compressor is definitely not one I would use on a master chain, but that's fine. You can't use everything for every purpose. But what I do like is just how aggressive and grabby this is. I mean, I made a joke earlier about being true Volt, but wow, does that actually feel true Volt to me? Use this for black metal. I hate you. They're casting your shadows of falsified truths. Impressions of blood are restraining my mind. The stains in my vision are making me blind. One thing I did notice is that the input trim, act trim actually does affect the compressor and the limiter and everything in series to it. So that's really interesting. It doesn't really affect the volume much, but it does affect what the signal sees up to the compressor. A lot of gain on this boy. Wow. And honestly, the limiter is definitely not a stereo bus limiter. I'll give them that. This is definitely a channel limiter if you're going to use it at all as one. And honestly, it's pretty good. Maybe not as good as like the uh, T Rex precision limiter or the one built into the Yamaha CL5. I probably wouldn't go that far. But what I will say is that this is a very good channel. Let's turn it all off, shall we? <laughs> I hate you. They're casting your shadows of falsified truths. Impressions of blood are restraining my Incoming. The stains in my vision are making me blind. I can't let go. All right, and bring you back online. It just makes everything so crispy. And honestly, the volume hasn't actually changed that much. What has changed is how perceptibly saturated everything is. You can drive this baby for days and make things just absolutely squished. And I love it. This is, of course, a free plugin. And I highly recommend you go and download all of the plugins from Analog Obsession. And if you find that you really like them, please do yourself a favor and subscribe to them. Support them heal them and even though you're not really going to get anything out of it other than more free plugins isn't that more than enough for you <laughs> all right so if anybody has any questions feel free to leave them in the down below in the comment section please subscribe to me like this video comment as much as you can my wife is always telling me always be plugging and if you find that you enjoy my content then please let me know because it does feel good to have people tell me that they like my stuff, at least if it's polite. <laughs> Anyhow, this is Phil from One Wall Studio, and I hope that this was interesting to you. If it was or wasn't, I still want to know. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.